down to the very last chapter. Very few pages left. So um, he discovered that he turned his mom to chocolate and it went from bad to worse. And he finally was able to find the store again. And um, he discovered that he was the one in control of his actions and he was not making good choices and he was being greedy. So he just learned a valuable lesson. Let's find out how the story ends. Chapter 12, it looks like there's a sign and those broken bottles again that says sold. The front door was open and John rushed into the living room where he had left his mother. She was not there now, but on the chair was a small wet lace handkerchief. John ran into the dining room and onto the kitchen. As he came to the kitchen door, he heard the ring of silver against crockery. Then he saw a wonderful sight. His mother was arranging coffee things on a tray. He dashed into the kitchen and he flung his arms around his mother's waist, sobbing and laughing with relief and joy. There, there, said Mrs. Midas, stroking the hair from John's forehead. You've had a very disturbing day, dear. But in a few minutes, we're all going to have supper and everything will be fine again. Goodness, I do believe I need some coffee myself. I felt so strange just then in the other room. I really, I don't know what came over me. The door from the garden opened and Mr. Midas came in. Before we settle down, Mrs. Midas said to John, have a glass of good cold milk. You look so hot. So they didn't know what had happened to her. Well, John thought he certainly couldn't scare them by telling them. He watched gratefully as his mother took a frosty blue jug from the refrigerator and poured it from it poured from it a glassful of icy creamy milk. Trembling with nervousness, John tilted the glass down against his open mouth. The liquid flowed in and down his throat, and he rem it remained purely milky, deliciously milky, tasting of nothing but fresh, clean milk. After the first long, wonderful gulp, he suddenly recalled that he had not thanked the storekeeper for saving his mother. Mom, he said, may I go out for a minute? I'll be right back. All right, John, she said, but supper will be ready in ten minutes. Don't keep us waiting. John ran briskly down the street until he came to the corner where he always turned right when he was going to Susan's house. There he turned left instead and started along the two blocks of unfamiliar streets leading to the candy store. Soon he came to the corner where the red brick building had been, but there was no building again and no store and, of course, no storekeeper. In the corner lot, there was nothing to be seen but a heap of rusty tin cans and broken bottles surrounding a signboard with new lettering that said, Sold. Kind of leaves us hanging there a little bit, like, what happens to the store? I hope you guys enjoyed the book. Thank you for reading and following along with me. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.